Hey! We're going to Niaz, aren't we? Uh, right. Nice to meet you, Nazamil. Hello everyone, so good to see you! Tales of Arise, the latest indie Tales of franchise by Bandai Namco, was released in September 2021 and just received DLC. Two years later! These aren't just little side stories or a boss rush mode or anything either. No, this is Tales of Arise Beyond the Dawn and it's a full campaign extra epilogue that complements the main story, taking place one year after the base game's ending. This is a rather unusual situation, as years ago, producer Yusuke Tomizawa stated that Tales of Arise would not be receiving any DLC, claiming that the game offered a complete experience as is. However, the game has sold over 2 million copies across platforms, and fans were wanting some more. We've had our full course meal, but is this the long-awaited dessert that our palate needed? We'll take a quick look into the expansion as I pose the question. You'll see this? Tales of Arise's Beyond the Dawn expansion is $29.99 US dollars, $24.99 British pounds. It's available for PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Series X, S, and Steam. Content includes a new epilogue that clocks in at an average of about 20 hours of gameplay. There's an additional costume for each character, as well as the Traveler's Support Pack with in-game currency and level-up items. There's also unique bonuses that you can earn and carry between both the main game and this expansion. Tales of Arise enjoyed a blend of positive sales and reviews, becoming the third top-selling game in the series after Tales of Symphonia and Tales of Vesperia. It won Best RPG of 2021 Game Awards. I bet you probably forgot about that bit, didn't you? It beat out other nominees like Shin Megami Tensei V, Monster Hunter Rise, and Cyberpunk 2077, which uh, probably wasn't that difficult given the state that game was in at launch, but uh, that's besides the point. Even if for a short while, people were celebrating a Tales game, and it seemed to reach a wider audience than the series usually had in a very long time. Part of the reason is that it leaned further away from the anime aesthetic and dove into some more darker themes. Being years after Tomizawa stated that this game didn't need extra content via DLC, I knew I just had to dive in myself and see if that statement was true. Also because I just really love the Tales of series. As Beyond the Dawn takes place one year after the main story, there are in fact some little spoilers in this video, but I'll try and tiptoe around those as best I can. The key information you need to know from the main game is that, as with many, many Tales games, the theme centers around two separate worlds and or two different races of people. Beyond the Dawn explores how these people, the Danans and Renans who often show hostility towards one another, must now learn how to coexist peacefully with one another. One of the two main protagonists, Alfin, has earned a reputation for himself as the Blazing Sword. To some, he is a savior who prevented catastrophe to their world, and they show him respect. To others, he is the reason for their hardship, as they now must integrate into a new society with the Danans and Renans living together. Some are cool with it and are taking the new challenges in stride. Others, well, they're just not having it. Your first introduction to the discrimination between these people is through a young girl named Nazamil, who uniquely has the blood of both Danans and Renans. It is an uncommon occurrence in this world. Because of this, she's caught between them both and has suffered a harsh upbringing. Luckily, your merry band of six reunite very early on, providing a foil to Nazamil's uncertainty and lack of trust towards others. Our group itself is composed of both Danan and Renan people, so we've sort of already learned how to just accept others as they are, a concept that's very foreign to Nazamil as she learns to open up and express herself more. As you might have been able to tell right away, Nazamil is the new and central character to Beyond the Dawn, and integral to this extra story as your party travels around the world once more. It's a little strange starting out, as the game will very rapidly reintroduce you to battle mechanics and overworld tutorials in a short amount of time. Beyond the Dawn will check various milestones you achieved in the main game and give you starting bonuses upon beginning a new game, but nothing will directly carry over. You're given set stats, levels, weapons, and other bonuses you can claim from the DLC menu. Your titles with attached skills are partially unlocked, and it's up to you to redistribute your points to skills that you probably already earned in the base game for some reason. For the most part, it feels like the journey I went on before didn't really feel like it counted or amounted for very much, you know? I get starting everyone from a baseline, but I just wish more of my previous journey was naturally carried over. 
gameplay wise if you played and beaten the original in the last two years then you pretty much know everything about the way the game works travel from location to location interacting with the inhabitants of the world while taking on side quests and clearing dungeons until you make it to the end well i say dungeons but tales games for the longest time have been suffering from what i call endless hallway syndrome once upon a time, the Tales series had traditional world maps and unique dungeons that involved puzzle solving, albeit relatively simple ones. Ever since games like Tales of Graces F and Tales of Exilia for the PS3, many Tales games have ditched world maps and dungeons and have been reduced to running around areas that are masked as hallways. You'll be fighting or avoiding enemies while picking up treasure or pressing the occasional button to proceed along the way. It's uh, not very engaging and sadly one of the weakest parts of the Tales series these days. And also. There is a new dungeon to explore here, but if you've played to the end of the base game, you'll probably will get more flashbacks to the final dungeon again. It's not as aggressively long, but look at the size of this place! It's also dotted with boss fights against remix monsters, and some of them repeat two years later and I don't think they learned their lesson on dungeon pacing. It simply serves to fluff out the pacing with battles from one plot point to the next. And these battles are essentially exactly the same as before. I never got to make a video on the original so I can actually talk about them a little. If you haven't touched Tales of Arise before, the battle system works in real time as opposed to being turn based like various other RPGs. You perform basic attacks with the R1 button, dodge with R2, and can chain together stronger attacks called arts assigned to three separate face buttons. Some attacks will automatically leap you into the air where you can continue the chain and perform three more assigned attacks that are specifically for air combos. You can also set it to have a second list of ground and air arts by holding down L2, allowing you to set a total of 12 arts at a time. The game has you and your party learning new arts to experiment with over the course of the journey, and it's just fun to see what works with your playstyle. Your partners are also very integral to combat. You are free to play as any character that you want, and your remaining party members will be controlled by however you set their strategy to. Each character has a unique ability in battle called boost attacks that can guarantee a knockdown on certain enemies once they've been charged. Alphans, in general, will knock down most enemies and bosses while providing additional damage to anyone that's already been knocked down. Shion can down flying enemies right out of the air by using her rifle. If you see an enemy casting a spell, you can use Rinmo's ability to steal that charge to use for herself. Law is an aggressive brawler that can down enemies with armor or shields. Kisara uses her massive shield to interrupt enemies charging across the field, while also providing a buff to defense for everyone during battle. Finally, Dolhalim can ensnare nimble enemies that keep dodging your attacks, holding them still by downing them. Everyone has their own use in battle. Some solely focus on physical attacks, magic attacks, support, or a mix of roles. I'm always a big fan of being able to utilize an entire party during battle and not just benching some of them. It makes the whole journey feel more like a real group effort. One of the best features that this game introduced in battle are boost strikes. If you apply enough pressure onto an enemy, you can make them vulnerable to a two-person finisher. Oftentimes, the final enemy of battle will be especially vulnerable to one, and will usually end the battle in a very flashy cacophony of elemental effects and explosions. Every single character combination has a unique boost strike for a total of 15 unique paired finishers, and they're very satisfying every time. Alongside this are your Mystic Arts, which are your ultimate attacks you can combo into once you've reached an overlimit state, also making for a very flashy end to battle. Something I also appreciate is how seamlessly you go from the end of battle to right back onto the map. It keeps you going at a very brisk pace while you're out exploring. But as it turns out, I pretty much just explained the base game's battle system. There's nothing of note that I just mentioned which wasn't already in Beyond the Dawn system. Aside from side quests that can enhance your boost attacks, you're pretty much trading more of the same from before. Not that it's a bad thing, battles in Tales games are often very fast paced and exciting, but there's nothing you haven't seen here before. And while we're on that topic, that's essentially the theme for the rest of the DLC. The world here has already been explored, and while there are specific reconstruction quests that help flesh out cities and towns out more, there's only a tiny bit of changes actually done to the environment. The game expects you to be familiar with the entire world already, as if you came right off of beating the main campaign. On the story side, even though it's shorter in volume, it does give you just about enough time to get to know the characters and status of the world before a major plot point. And honestly, given what the characters have gone through and experienced, that climax is kinda sad and heartbreaking. This plot point, by the way, was specifically requested by Bandai Namco themselves to not spoil, show pictures, or show video until a certain amount of time has passed. I mean, people are still gonna do it, like, oh, I don't know, Bandco themselves in their own trailers. But it's nice that they at least say there will be a time where we can freely post content past a certain point, and don't keep it vague like some other games have in the past. 
So if you do know what happens, please don't spoil it, or you'll make Hoodle sad. And you wouldn't want to make this owl sad. Would you? Something I enjoy narratively is the way that the party tries to help Nazamil introduce herself into a world that can be free of discrimination. Beyond the party themselves getting along, she has shown examples of people with different racial and cultural backgrounds living in harmony in an organic way. For the most part, they don't try to hold her hand, speak for her, or make every opinion for her. Instead, they let Nazamil form her own thoughts, and given her background, I was invested in seeing what twists and turns those perspectives took over the course of the story. It's the pacing, however, that is a bit rushed. This feels like a concept for a story that could have taken its own form in a proper sequel, but then got truncated into a 20 or so hour campaign, with previously used assets thrown in to help speed up production. The story doesn't have enough time to land as strongly as it could. I ended up staying to see this cast talk with each other more. And for the most part, that's what I've come to expect from Tales games. While the stories in the series typically linger on good, sometimes great, it's more often the character interactions that are always solid and stronger than what I experience in most other story-driven games. Our protagonist Alfin struggles with the consequences of being considered a hero by many and a destroyer by the rest. What do you do when so many people expect you to help them because of your past deeds? It's a perspective we seldom see past the main story of many heroes in media like this. It makes you think, are people really free when they always depend on others to solve all their problems for them? It's a topic that we see addressed in a world that is very consistent in showing you how society is trying to change for the better, or outright refusing this new reality of coexistence. And it's the way that you see your cast of six communicate, joke around, and support each other that always makes the Tales series one of the best in the genre to accomplish this. More than any other Tales game, the world and traversal is constantly filled with the banter of the party, whether it's story related or them reacting to an NPC that you just spoke to. There's also the presence of skits, a classic Tales feature that offers optional dialogue between characters, many of which are not essential to the story, but more aimed to develop relationships between these characters. The members of our party have undergone their character development from the game's main story. Everyone already gets along like the best friend squad that they are from the very beginning, and it's more about the party reacting to Nazamil's interactions with the world this time around. She plays an integral role, but anyone jumping into Beyond the Dawn who doesn't immediately get invested with her might find it difficult to care enough to see what twists occur in her story. As with many Tales games, there's always fan service for those who have stuck around with the series for a long time. If you know which good boy this is referring to, then you know right away. And that extends to new costumes that also release with the DLC. Nearly every Tales game allows you to dress up your party in costumes from past characters in the series. The base game it did not provide this, which was kind of disappointing. You can now dress Alfin as Luger Kresnik from Tales of Exilia 2, Sion as Velvet Crow from Tales of Berseria, Rinwell as Rita Mordio from Tales of Vesperia, Law as Jude Mathis from Tales of Exilia, Kisara as Flynn Shifo from Tales of Vesperia, and probably my favorite inclusion, Doholim as Jade Curtis from Tales of the Abyss. Finally, more people can show respect to the Pac-Man belt buckle. I still want one of these. As you saw, some of these costumes look so amazingly fitting down to the weapons that they use. Half of these are some of my favorite characters in the Tales series, so I think these were good choices. What is not a good choice and is still upsetting is that these costumes are $15 to own, especially when cameo costumes used to be just packed in or obtainable in-game like in the good old days. There's even costumes from outside Tales that dip into other Nanko series, but these must be paid for as well. I wish they would follow Tales of Vesperia's example and just have them be available without paying extra money. Seeing how popular the series has become, I am never going to get over the fact that you can dress Judith up as Cosmos. Speaking of the Xeno series, I can't help but compare this ever so slightly to another extra chapter to a story that was released this year, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed. This campaign is also claimed to be about the same 20 or so hour length, but when I put them side by side, there's not much of a comparison. Beyond the Dawn takes place in the same world with very little change to the gameplay, if any at all. We revisit the same locations with the same characters, and if you haven't touched this game at all in the last two years, you might find yourself struggling to remember key locations, terminology, and plot points. They will slightly nudge and refresh you, but most of the time I was fumbling around asking myself, I've been here before, haven't I? Future Redeem released about 8 months later with a completely new cast and explorable world, which made introducing yourself to entirely new locations feel not only much more organic, but also ambitious. For Tales of Arise, unfortunately, Beyond the Dawn feels like an extra long side quest in comparison. It's interesting to see a game go from claiming it did not need DLC, to giving us exactly that a full two years after its initial release. 
More often than not, the series would make a completely new game, like Tales of Symphonia, Dawn of the New World, Tales of Destiny 2, or a prequel like Tales of Berseria. When I first heard rumblings of Tales of Arise Beyond the Dawn, I would have bet money that it was going to be some kind of anime adaptation because there are so many Tales games that have been adapted. Fantasia, Eternia, Symphonia, Tales of the Abyss got a full series, Zeseria's told a different take on the story, and Vesperia has a prequel movie. But uh, nope, it's DLC. It somewhat worries me because now I'm not sure when we can expect the next proper entry to the series or if we're waiting for more remasters, which has become a sensitive topic in itself. And I mean, come on, there's no way you will ever get a mascot as precious as Hoodle. I, I still can't believe how big this plush is. Like, he's supposed to be half this size. He just can't stop rolling away everywhere. And that about wraps up this look at the DLC for Tales of Arise. I never got a chance to talk about the game in general, so I'm taking this opportunity while I can. Did you play the original, or had you completely forgotten that this game existed until Beyond the Dawn was announced? Trust me, you're not the only one. If you enjoyed this video, leave your comments down below, subscribe to Good Vibes Gaming, leave a like, check out our memberships and Patreon where you can join our Discord for just $1. You know, I'm not sure what's the best way to close this video today, so here's a clip of Alfin and Rinwell playing catch with Hoodle. It heals my soul every time. Thanks for watching everyone, till we meet again.